gospel reading that Pastor Adi just read, I share with you today at verse 15. Jesus says, one's life does not consist in the abundance of his or her possessions. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. An elderly man was near the end of his life on this earth. Now, this man had collected a lot of possessions in this world along the way. Now he was on his deathbed. And the members of his family were gathered all around him. The man was now sitting on his bed with his arms folded like this, and he had a very determined look on his face. One of the family members said, someone told him, that he couldn't take all of those possessions with him, and so he's decided he isn't going. (laughs) We laugh at that, but isn't that very similar to what Jesus told us in the story in God's Word before us today? Let me ask you, can you be rich and successful and still be a Christian? I hope you've answered yes to that question. Because we can be rich and successful and still be a Christian. Look at what Jesus says here before us today. A person's life does not consist in the abundance of his or her possessions. Now, I really like how the Living Bible translates this verse. The Living Bible says it this way. Real life and real living are not related to how rich you are. I like that. The story that Jesus told here today is not about how many things you possess, is it? No, the story that Jesus told here today is about what are your priorities in your life. And that's why Jesus said, don't lay up treasures for yourself, but be rich towards God. Jesus reminds us of two very important things here today. First of all, Jesus reminds us that greed tempts all of us. (coughs) All of us are tempted with the desire to have lots of possessions. Think about it. We envy people who are rich, don't we? But Jesus here pities them. When we hear people inheriting a fortune, we say, how lucky they are. When we hear about someone winning the lottery, we say, I would love to trade places with them. When we think about all the things that money can buy, we say, I would love to be rich like that. And yet, Jesus says something entirely different here, doesn't he? Jesus says that riches can often lead to tragedy in your life instead of to blessings in your life. Jesus actually felt sorry for people who were rich because they would have so many problems with greed. Secondly, Jesus reminds us here that material things will test our faith. The more material things you have in your life, the more temptations you're going to have to want to trust yourself instead of to put your trust in God. A very wealthy man had gained a lot of money in his life when he was very young. And one day he asked his wife, if I didn't have all of this money, would you still love me? And she said, oh yes, dear, I'd still love you. I would miss you, but I'd still love you. (laughs) It's easy to get caught up in material things, isn't it? We all have our temptations to trust our possessions rather than to trust our God. So I encourage you today to ask yourself these questions to help you with this matter. First question. Where is my security? Riches can give a person a very false sense 
of security. When a person has riches, he or she can easily be deceived into thinking that they don't need God in their life anymore. Jesus made this so very clear in his story today. When this man was blessed with a bumper crop, you know, with, with all kinds of extra crops, he started to count up all the money he was going to make from these crops. And it all was almost embarrassing, wasn't it? He said to himself, you now have so much money, it's going to last you for years and years, so you can now just eat and drink and be merry. He really felt secure in his money, didn't he? He didn't need God anymore in his life. He had everything he needed on his own, or so he thought. He never even thought that he might one day die. Where do you put your security? The second question to ask is, do I include God in my planning? The rich man in the story said, what am I going to do with all of my riches? He didn't talk to God about what he now was going to do. He never even thought about what he could use that money for to really make a difference. He never even thought about using that money to help people like with clothing and food who were in need. No. He just thought of himself. You see, when we don't include God in our planning, we really become blind to the world here around us. And that's what happened to the rich man here in this story. He didn't talk to God about what he now was going to do with all the riches that God had blessed him with. He just thought of how easy his life was now going to be. So, do you include God in your planning of how to use all the money that God's blessed you with? A third question is, why do I want more? Why do I want more? Do you want more money so you can have more things? Do you want more money so that you can be famous? Do you want more money so that people will tell you how great you are? The rich man here in this story used the word I six times. He was only concerned about his own life. We'd say he was selfish, wasn't he? So why do you want more money? A fourth question to ask is, what do I want to be remembered for? Someone once said, there are three kicks to your money. The kick of earning it, the kick of having it, and the kick of giving it away. Think about it. Isn't it true that most people are remembered in their lives for what they have given away? George Willis Spann lived in Pueblo, Colorado. For 34 years, he was a custodian at a local public elementary school. The children there all called him Pops. And Pops loved the children that he was working alongside. He would listen to their troubles. He would help them fix up their bicycles. He would give them a little money from time to time. He would even give them Christmas presents. Well, Pops retired. And after he retired, the people in Pueblo, Colorado, we're getting ready to build a new elementary school. And to remember what Pops had done, they named that elementary school George Willis Spann Elementary School. Pops was remembered for what he had given away in his entire life to these little children. What do you want to be remembered for? A fifth question is, am I rich towards God? 
You know, this is how Jesus closed the story about this rich man today. He said, you fool. You are going to die tonight. And then all of that money you've collected in your life, whose is it going to be? This is the way it is with people who gather treasures for themselves and are not rich towards God. A person's life is a failure and a tragedy. If all you have at the end is nothing to show for all the money that God blessed you with. So, do you use your money on God things? Do you use your money to make a difference in the lives of people around you? Do you give God money that God can use to help more people put their trust in Jesus? To allow more people to have the knowledge of forgiveness of their own sins? To be able to have people have the comfort of knowing they're going to live forever in heaven? How do you use what God's given you? Are you rich towards God? Here is what makes us all rich. Knowing that through our trust in Jesus, no matter what happens, we have forgiveness for all of our sins. And because of Jesus, we're going to go to live one day in heaven. Here's what riches mean. A life that's lived serving God and helping other people around you. Here's what true riches are. It's having a loving personal family and having a loving church family through which you can really make a difference here in this world. True riches is having this great relationship, this friendship with Jesus, knowing that he's always around. He's only a prayer away. That's true riches. That's what this man in the story didn't have. But that's what you have. How blessed we all truly are. Amen. Please now rise as we join together in the next hymn of praise.